Hey, it's Tyler here. And today we're going to cover the differences between the rank and dense rank SQL window functions. Let's get into it, but before that, if you haven't done it yet, please subscribe to our channel and stay up to date with the latest interview questions. First question we're going to cover is common Yelp data science interview question to find the top five cities with the most five stars reviews. The key giveaway we need to use a rank function in our solution is we're being asked to find the top five cities. Whenever our task includes finding the top number of some category, we'll typically leverage rank over dense rank. The reason being is the rank function will skip a rank number in the case of a tie. We almost never know in advance if the data we're having to rank is going to have ties present. So we have to present a general solution. If the data doesn't have a tie, then the top five ranks will give us the top five cities. However, if the data does have a tie, we skip ranks to accommodate for the tied rows and the top five ranks will still give us the top five cities. The correct solution ends up looking like this query. The way to think of this solution is we're first leveraging a subquery to obtain a table, CTE 5 stars. This table is going to have a row for each city, the total count of 5 stars, as well as our rank function, where we rank over an ordering of the count. One thing to know about the rank function is that you can rank over several different columns. In this case, it's just the count column. And you can also rank over either ascending or descending data. In our solution here, we're ranking over a descending count, and then we're going to call that column rank. We apply a filter to the number of stars to only receive the five star reviews since that's within the criteria the question gives us. And then we group by city to get that count and rank over each city. Our main query is selecting the city, again, the count of five stars and the rank from our subquery, the CTE five stars, now we're filtering the rank to less than or equal to five to present the top five cities. Finally, we're ordering by a descending count of the five stars. If we run the code, we get quite a few cities. In fact, we actually get more than five cities, but our answer is technically correct. And here's why. The question demands we find the top five cities, but there is actually a multi-way tie for fourth place. Given no other criteria by which to filter out our cities, we must include all the cities which are part of this fourth place tie since they have identical counts of five star reviews. Looking at the rank column, we see the key feature which separates rank from dense rank, and it's how it increments the ranking. Notice we have a tie for second place between Toronto and Las Vegas. We end up skipping rank three. Then we have a multi-way tie for fourth place, so we also wouldn't expect to see any fifth rank. In fact, our next rank would actually be nine if we remove this where filter for the rank. And we can see that here with Brampton taking the ninth place. So the way in which the rank function increments is easily observable in this data set. We're ultimately summing the count of any given tied rank in order to get the next appropriate rank. Let's see what happens when you apply dense rank to this solution instead. Our results expands considerably, and it's easy to see why. The dense rank function is not skipping any ranks in the case of a tie. So remember how the rank function skipped rank three due to the tie between Toronto and Las Vegas at second place. Now we go on to rank three and then rank four, Looking through the data without getting too deep into it, we already see the output would be an incorrect answer. Since all cities, Brampton and below, with a single five-star rating, are neither in the top five nor tied with any of the top five. So you can see now how rank takes priority when you need to return the top or bottom number of some data. Since it will skip ranks in the case of ties, we don't have to worry about presenting results out of the top number we want. And this allows our code to be flexible with our where clause, where we filter out for the top ranks. And we have the ability to better handle ties if any exist in the data. Before we go to the next question, let's frame this question in a way which we would want to use dense rank instead. We know since it asks us to find the top five cities, 
we're essentially having to find the top number of some component of the data. So we'd use the rank function. If the question instead asks us to find the top three counts of five stars for cities with Yelp reviews, we wouldn't be able to use rank. Anytime we need to find the top discrete values instead of values, we'll need to use a dense rank. Since we're not skipping rank incrementations, with dense rank, we can easily give all the cities with the counts of five, four, and two, which are the top three counts, simply by filtering for ranks less than or equal to three. And you can see that represented in the output here. However, if we use rank and apply the same where filter for a rank less than or equal to three, we end up only presenting Phoenix through Las Vegas and the top two discrete counts due to a tie at the second count. Although it's subtle, this is one of the critical differences for why you would use one ranking window function over the other. Failure to do so will often result in the wrong answer. Although sometimes, especially with finding the highest rank or rank one of any sort of data, you'll typically get the correct result. You have to carefully assess the question and understand which part of the data it wants you to find the top of. The next question we're going to analyze is a common Airbnb data science interview question. This question asks us to rank guests based on the number of messages they've sent to a host. The key giveaway we need to use a dense rank function in our solution is the question tells us to give ties the same rank, but also not skip any ranks. Whenever we must not skip any rankings, our first instinct should be to use a dense rank window function. We know the rank function will skip a rank increment in the case of ties, and again, we usually have insufficient evidence in advance to conclude how many ties are going to be present in the data, if any. To present a flexible and general solution, we would instead use dense rank. We're also not really asked to find the top number of anything here, so we don't have to factor that into determining which rank window function we should use. Here's what the correct solution would end up looking like. We're ranking over a descending order of the sum of the number of messages, as well as grouping by the ID of the guest to which we should apply the sum for messages. One interesting thing to note about the solution is we aren't asked to filter the ranks or order them in any way. In fact, our output data is ordered by the ranking in ascending order, but this correlates perfectly with the sum of number of messages in descending order, and each will present a technically correct solution. Looking at our data, we see that it's not skipping any rankings and essentially accomplishes all the questions asked us. If we were instead to apply the rank function, here's what our solution would look like. We notice there are ties for certain guests, such as guests with the 20 sum or guests with the 17, and the rank function ends up skipping in the case of ties. Uh, therefore, this would present an incorrect solution. The ordering of our data is still technically correct, but given we don't meet the criteria to not skip rankings, it wouldn't be the best answer to present to the interviewer. So you see this is a relatively simple problem, but exposes the most fundamental difference between dense rank and rank, which is how they treat ties in the data. Memorize how dense rank will never allow gaps in the rankings and will always increment the rank by one, even in the case of multi-way ties, and rank will sum together the ties to calculate how to increment the rank, allowing gaps. All differences and outputs from these two ultimately stem from this difference in how they treat ties in the data. So we have now covered two questions which show crucial reasons to use specifically dense rank or rank and not the other window function. To apply these principles more broadly, the first difference to consider would be if you're being asked to skip rankings or not. Many times a question won't address this, so you may have to think a bit deeper. The second thing you might consider would be what the question is asking you to find. If you have to find the top number of something, whether it be homes, people, messages, or some other metric, you'll typically need to use the rank window function. Whereas if they're asking you to find the top number of discrete values, such as the top five different home prices, populations, or other metric, you'll want to use dense rank instead. I hope you enjoyed this walkthrough and now understand the difference between these two ranking window functions. Keep in mind, there are usually several ways to solve any given problem, and many of these solutions could exclude either of these functions for both of the problems we covered today. 
However, understanding them allows you to develop some of the most simple, general, and efficient solutions that are available. And ultimately, to really internalize these differences, it helps to practice answering the interview questions by constructing solutions to them yourself and applying the knowledge you've gained today. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more videos like this one, check out this channel in the playlist with many more data science interview questions. Also, make sure to subscribe to this channel to stay up to date when we publish new content.